Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got another great presentation today. We're going to teach you everything about Bell's palsy under nine minutes. That's our goal. Repetition is the key. So keep watching this and repeat yourself. You will learn, remember, for a very long time. Again, my name is Premier Charya. I'm a program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and medical residents. So what is, and let's go into our subject, uh, Bell's palsy is a peripheral facial nerve weakness. Cranial nerve 7 is involved, so it's a peripheral facial nerve, okay? And types, it could be partial or complete, and epidemiology, annual incidence like 23 to 33 per 100,000, equally in men and women. And the causes could be mostly like idiopathic. Nobody knows why it's happening. Other possible viral causes, cold sore, genital herpes is like, Herpes simplex, you need to be very careful about it. There's a lot of uh, reports coming about herpes simplex, okay? Herpes zoster, Epstein Barr, CMV, respiratory illness, German measles, mumps, flu, hand, foot, and mouth disease, and the pathogenesis, bell spells could be. We talked about idiopathic, nobody knows what causes it, but remember, herpes simplex virus. Signs and symptoms, especially a patient usually present with inability to wrinkle the brow, okay, inability to close an eye, drooping of the eye, asymmetric facial muscle tone, loss of nasolabial fold, drooping of the mouth, and asymmetric smile. Those are the things usually somebody will recognize it. So other signs and symptoms can be facial weakness, usually unilateral, um, and difficulty pronouncing certain words, dry eye and mouth, altered taste, drooling, sensitivity to sound, difficulty eating, drinking, muscle twitches on the face, irritation of eye on the involved size, and headache. So we got like, I mean, the main thing when a patient comes with the Bell's palsy, you want to make sure this is not a central, this is a peripheral lesion, right? So peripheral, like who cares? Like, I mean, you know, you, but central, you have to be very, very careful. You don't want to miss a central etiology like stroke. Okay, so what are the symptoms? We got a nice picture up here. Look at the clinical features. If it is central, ability to frown and lift eyebrows remains intact, okay? If it is central, ability to close the eyelid completely will be intact. Mouth drooling will be present. But in the peripheral, ability to frown the lift the eyebrow will be impaired. Ability to close the eyelid completely will be impaired. And look at the lesion in the um, in both one. If it is peripheral, it's facial nerve. Usually that side is like completely kind of affected. Okay, uh, but the other one is going to be like half uh, partially kind of affected on the face. Um, so Bell's palsy and stroke, um, major difference, kind of put it up there, age, 50, 20 to 50, well, usually stroke is greater than 60, upper, lower face, mouth, cheek, and eye always, um, and upper face, um, and then arm or leg weakness, it's never happened in Bell's palsy because of peripheral lesion, right? Tongue weakness, speech problem, never happens, vision problem, never happened, confusion, difficulty, understanding, never happened. Severe headache, usually, I mean, uh, sometimes uh, in Bell's palsy, but doesn't happen all the time, okay? Diagnosis, no testing, it's like one of those diagnoses by clinical examination. But you have to rule out like some of the causes causing, maybe, you know, test for syphilis and Lyme disease also very important, okay? So you do CBC, you know, troponymal antimodal tests, HIV, fasting glucose, ESR, Lyme type tests, because you're trying to rule out the other causes. So imaging is not necessary in the patients. Um, so management usually put the eye protection and the lubrication of the eyes. Corticosteroids are, if you start uh, symptoms like curly, there's a role for it. Antivirals alone do not improve complete recovery unless the patient have like herpes simplex causing it, okay? Facial exercise therapy like mime therapy may improve functional mm, recovery. Acupuncture may improve outcomes. So it's mainly the supportive care. Um, the complication, you can have ocular complication like corneal drying, corneal abrasion, you can have chronic spasm of the facial muscles, additional complication like crocodile tear syndrome, um, and then contracture, tinnitus, hearing loss could happen, anxiety, depression, and related to the appearance of our social functions going to be affected. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. Thank you.